Welcome back and good morning. Time for market moves on MT4 here. A bit of a, a delay here with the go to webinar software. Then the audio settings uh, somehow are a bit uh, disturbed. Nevertheless, now we can get going and uh, I hope the sounds all right. Please let me know if you can hear me fine and uh, get uh, to see my screen here also. Well, what's going on? Obviously, the big story from the energy side here on the European area, uh, kind of uh, emergency plans are being uh, uh, decided upon in the European uh, in the European Union. Obviously, uh, energy ministers are gathering uh, uh, as early as today, even over towards the next couple of days. The story being that Russia has reduced their supply of gas uh, to 20 percent of the original value that's uh, regarding the Nord Stream 1 pipeline. Official information from Russia uh, states that uh, obviously the information might be um, that uh, it's due to maintenance uh, issues. Uh, obviously we know all how the story likely going to unfold somehow further. Um, official figures or say um, at least uh, uh, figures regarding or according to consultant, the consultancy Wood McKenzie is stating that uh, current supply would only kind of last towards uh, February in the European Union and that obviously kind of really causing a shortage in particular for the especially heavy industry, a gas uh, uh, intensive industry, a chemical giant from Ludwigshafen in southern Germany and um, BASF which accounts actually for as much as 40,000 different products being produced uh, might face. That's the, the biggest single the corporation taking the most uh, of the energy supplies, at least from my home country in Germany. So obviously, if that would come to a sort of a, a stop or reduced uh, reduced supply, then impact for various other industries uh, might be consequences. Uh, and nevertheless, we know how the story might unfold, obviously, and how much of an impact towards the European economy uh, in this case. Uh, this might have. So fingers crossed that the situation might be somewhat uh, at least uh, I would say not solved but uh, might at least find some other opportunities. So obviously we can also get uh, further news or we also got further news here from the Russian side where Russia is checking out with Africa on how they can uh, get on further supplies. We know also that um, Russia is selling uh, a petrol or say oil raw oil materials towards India, and that some of the uh, some of the oil is flowing back towards the European Union, as weird as it, 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 as it is, with a, a diesel supply. So we understand that the current situation might really turn uh, quite more intense, and to that the uh, well, that's what I've stated at the beginning that the uh, uh, restrictions over Russia, the sanctions over Russia, might as soon as uh, the next couple of months even backflow towards the European Union, in particular obviously towards the German decision makers here. So let's see how the market situation will unfold. But one thing is for sure, and that's definitely that prices are likely going to rise somehow further. I see an impact uh, obviously also for the oil market. Yesterday I've deleted my uh, buy stop order, yet today I kind of pushed this one back to the uh, back to the charts here or back to the market here in this case uh, the old order sitting at 100.50 so just about the above the 100 uh, uh, re, uh, psychological support area or resistance areas where i would like to get uh, my hands on to a further trading opportunity in the oil market the market itself might flow back towards higher levels as it seems uh, we could talk about various ideas and obviously the trend has really recently changed uh, is slight bit towards slightly falling prices since the oil market was not able to regain momentum above the 100 area yet obviously also spillover effects I would say uh, for now at least uh, which cause not only gas prices due to the political developments to uh, be of increasing price momentum I would also guess that the oil market itself uh, might kind of really get uh, some sort of momentum towards further areas further high points here that's at least how the longer term charts would suggest what have uh, uh, what has looked uh, somehow a bit bearish as of even yesterday we can see that 
daily chart, right? So the daily chart yesterday was trading at around the green line here at its low uh, points, 92.40 area. If you're looking back to the monthly chart, we can see how big of an impact uh, this has here in this case. And the market motivation seems to be kind of really back towards uh, higher levels, fundamentally driven politically decisiveness and driving these markets towards higher levels it's what's the key part in my observation of course regarding the oil market and that itself boosts one of our nice trading positions which we've just opened yesterday which is here the us dollar to the canadian dollar since the oil prices kind of are quite uh, uh, quite uh, positively impacting canadian the dollar momentum Canada obviously as one of the bigger oil exporters and uh, seemingly or similarly to um, to Norway uh, causing the Canadian dollar to strengthen we can see that in our dollar Canadian uh, currency pair here the market kind of really started turning around towards the end of uh, last week Friday positive and then yesterday Monday the market momentum uh, pushing uh, pushing prices again back towards lower levels which is where we uh, entered our trade uh, here yesterday and we can see that uh, simply what was happening the market kind of really nose dived again I sold the market again as it looks to be quite positive here uh, for me to favor first of all a bit of a strong Canadian dollar. Secondly, what I'm seeing here in markets is just that the US dollar itself is just turning somehow weaker. Dollar weakness is what we like to trade and what we like to uh, take here into consideration with the market turning lower, fueled by the longer term chart. That's the weekly or even the monthly chart. It's still the same story. We have these uh, black uh, resistance support trend lines here in market, which uh, uh, push me to believe the market turns again towards lower levels. Pin bar candle last week kind of turning lower. We took another trade already, which we entered and uh, even exited already last week. Great week we had. And uh, let's see how the market goes. But for now, it seems to that we are able to at least uh, uh, gear up some sort of momentum momentum with a recent or current trading environment here um, for the uh, uh, try uh, for the market momentum here uh, towards lower areas that's at least how I see it and that's at least how I would see a further market motivation it could be on the horizon further market motivation obviously it could turn it could turn me to believe uh, uh, to uh, trading this environment here towards lower levels so we reduced the stop loss uh, and we reduced the stop loss already kind of towards the uh, uh, highs for the trading day uh, here not quite actually towards the highs for the recent uh, uh, trading session in the uh, Asian uh, Asian hemisphere here so should the market regain some momentum I would like to get out of this trade uh, we've already started to gear up uh, quite some strength in the Canadian dollar and that's what I think uh, what I think might really cause this market to kind of turn to the downside here so let's see if the lows are being uh, pushed towards downside momentum areas here and i'm talking about the uh, 2850 2860 area that recent support slash resistance line here if it's going to be broken towards the downside i think uh, we have quite a bit of momentum here which uh, could tell me that uh, this market might be in for some falling price momentum here boosting the Canadian dollar over the US dollar. Obviously, news-wise, we have the Federal Reserve tomorrow, which is also another reason why I like to give this trade a slight less amount of breathing room. I would like to kind of really uh, take as much as profit out of this trade beforehand. Too much uh, negative or if even positive impact for this position, it could follow. And that's exactly why I like to protect the position as early as possible as a preview, obviously, to what might happen towards the next uh, couple of uh, trading hours here uh, for the day and then uh, looking over towards the euro against the canadian dollar we can see something similar happening here pin bar candle market slightly positive the euro actually is still fighting somewhat with a bit of an upside momentum it's still in a falling big time falling trend and it looks to me that the canadian dollar is just uh, fighting back nicely the canadian dollar is starting to appreciate here against the euro which is causing the markets to turn potentially at least here towards lower levels again the same story we might see that this little bit of a supportive trend we can see that here um, is going to be broken to the downside somehow soon however 
I'm going to play it uh, uh, single-sidedly on the dollar cat straight uh, as I think uh, this market has uh, more room towards falling prices. As we can observe, the US dollar weakness is just helping this market. The US dollar weakness, obviously, um, in this case, uh, is uh, uh, causing me to see a further negativity, further US dollar negativity kind of could cause uh, the Canadian dollar to take over impact. Puria, your question, if that's possible, no, we're currently not offering uh, offering this uh, here, so uh, you can't uh, you can't trade uh, the gas market currently uh, in this case, but uh, taking part of the oil market obviously is uh, one thing here, the gas market actually I would say also quite highly volatile, bit of a tricky way to trade it, so I would kind of really start uh, if I were you, uh, really making, uh, making use of the oil market, if not even then on on currency pairs, related currency pairs, so the Norwegian kroner, the Canadian dollar, among others, are obviously kind of quite moving a big time when we observe that the uh, the oil market or the gas market moving into different regions. Stock markets, interesting situation. Uh, they still look better, right? So the weekly chart still suggests me that the uptrend might be still in play. 4,000, 4,100 areas, what I would say makes potentially potentially sense for the S&P 500. Upside potential, at least, uh, it could be uh, seen in this case. That's also true for other uh, indices here. The NASDAQ could also kind of really regain some sort of momentum. Uh, however, shorter term daily charts, not very much short term, but shorter term charts uh, like the daily chart might kind of cause me to believe a bit of a retracement is currently happening, but the upside momentum could still be on the horizon. I'm never involved here at the moment. I still have only the S&P 500 trade on, which is uh, well protected, and I'm happily giving this trade some breathing room. As I said, there was a bit of a wrong positioning here, too small of a position size I chose back in the day. Nevertheless, I think it's well protected here. The swap doesn't really change anything much. By the way, uh, swap prices have been reduced by management at BD Swiss, so you'll enjoy uh, the cheaper trading costs here, which is something obviously of positivity offering us, uh, offering from uh, uh, from our side here. So enabling you to trade the markets more successfully, even obviously as a competitive advantage from the BD Swiss side in this case. So S&P slightly higher. Looking back to the uh, um, currency markets, even the Australian dollar is slightly moving to the upside. However, the four-hour chart is something what could be tradable actually. Shorter term, this is what I would see uh, here right now and uh, some sort of momentum trade to the downside. Pin bar, market falling, boom. And then again, pin bar, market falling, question mark, 69, 49, 69, 50 area is what uh, alongside that trend line could tell me that uh, further slight downside momentum it could be on the cards. There is a bit of a resistance play, which we can observe here right now at just around the 70 or 69, 90 area. So uh, leaving it up to you here, but uh, upside momentum still there. The uh, upside momentum, obviously, on the longer term charts can still be observed here. Pin bar candle last week higher, this week slight retracement potentially also higher, but shorter term plays uh, would urge me to believe that uh, a bit of volatility falling prices might be on the cards. Another word for the, regarding the stock market momentum is maybe worth considering. We're still trading below the 3% level, and that's the interesting part. 10-year yields uh, have uh, receded from the 3.3, 3.4 percentage level, giving us downside momentum right now, trading at the 2.8 uh, percentage level, uh, looking to be quite interesting. Shorter term ones, they are a bit inverted here. We can see two-year yields have also a kind of kind of uh, be uh, have had kind of came to the downside in this case. Um, still, they look quite positive to be honest here, but for the time being, and that's the positivity I would see for stock markets in this case. If we can observe that um, yields are trading at lower levels, uh, that would enable us to believe stock market momentum could be slightly positive. And then the uh, ETF here, that's what you can also trade basically with your invest account uh, at BD Swiss, uh, the ETF, uh, uh, the uh, uh, TLT ETF, basically long running uh, treasuries, uh, US treasuries, and they're giving us quite a bit of a positive reading here. Pin bar candle market moving to the upside uh, in this case 
ninth the next line in the sand is the 125 130 area 125 it's the range here. you can see here the next red resistance line which i would see might be retested before the cards might be reshuffled however next area is then the 130 area 130 50 which acts as a major resistance play and potentially pushing market again towards uh, downside areas. However, right now, as I said, we can see and observe that the market momentum is and could be in for some sort of upside motivation. That's at least how it looks like to me, and which is why I see that stock markets might give us some sort of upside uh, motivation. Let's check out our open positions. What else do we have on? The gold market. I let, uh, gold and silver are in particular of interest here right now. Uh, starting with our open position, the trade is not at uh, extreme positive levels here. We bought at 1720, uh, say, 171950, um, and the market started to raise uh, or to, to gear up momentum slightly. And it looks to be still that on the weekly chart, weekly dollar pushing gold markets to the upside here we're trading still on top of a very important supportive uh, trend line here and that's the horizontal trend at 1700 1705 which enabled the market to kind of come back towards higher levels looking quite positive here for now i would say and hence i also might see that uh, despite some sort of volatility well the market is not really reactive pretty much right and it might look like uh, the market kind of pops back to the downside we've seen these falling prices slight resistance play and again falling prices however if i'm looking at the daily or uh, rather actually even the weekly chart i would play it off the long-term momentum and that's why i still have some sort of confidence in light of the other positions which are still in profit s p as i talked about dollar cat short as i talked about um, previously i would like to give this trade a bit of a breathing room here it makes not much sense to adjust the stop loss in this market here as we speak but it makes somehow sense to me at least to, to uh, keep this trade on and uh, leave this market with some potential upside motivation so let me see and observe how this market goes obviously further updates are coming via our telegram vip channel uh, in this case here regarding the, the gold market Moving over to the Japanese yen, that's the tricky situation here. As I said, I would not like to trade it as such, but it had given us a, some sort of a, a downside play here um, uh, from the yesterday's chart. However, our trade would have not been triggered. I'm not in this uh, trade anyway. So another sell stop order here at around the uh, uh, below the 136 area is the clear path for me and uh, well the market still looks to me <clears throat> like uh, uh, trading towards lower levels we have these sort of railroad tracks uh, here so one candle up one candle down market retracing somehow higher but potentially pushing towards lower levels here so that calls me to believe uh, a dollar japanese yen could weaken somehow further downside motivation at least uh, on the horizon across the board and with current uh, with different currency pairs here uh, where the japanese yen is involved the euro starting to appreciate a little bit and that's the tricky situation here the monthly chart we still have a couple of days here and during this week still pushes to the upside the weekly chart however still gives me the downside momentum and that's another opportunity would i which i would see here um uh, the 130 uh, uh, the uh, sorry the, the low of the a pin bar area here, the 136, uh, uh, sorry, 137 and below area is uh, what I would uh, see here uh, causing me to be, sorry, 138, of course, uh, in this case, uh, causing me to believe uh, downside momentum could be key. Again, it's a counter trend trade, so I'm not really sure if that's something worth looking at, but definitely after the long move to the upside, Japanese yen strength, Japanese yen strength might be uh, kind of, uh, might uh, come back uh, in this case. The pound itself, for political news, nothing much. Both uh, Rishi Sunak and competitor Liz uh, Truss uh, are fighting in order to kind of uh, secure the office as a new prime minister. The Tories party are going to select either one as a winner uh, by September 5. Uh, currently, the dollar weakness playing itself slightly against the pound. Not too much to observe, as I said. I don't have any a big opportunity which I would see here in the pound itself. So. 
let's just uh, keep this information aside and then obviously kind of the other situation which is still the geopolitical tension side keeps uh, the oil markets uh, and uh, gas markets here at bay that's the critical situation but i think uh, with our current positions we are well pre uh, we are well uh, well established which uh, what we can do the order in oil moving potentially higher could give us uh, an upside potential as we said stock market still looks slightly better a bit of a dollar weakness, uh, and let's move towards the euro dollar currency pair here. A bit of a dollar weakness is what I would still expect here. However, it's just not looking quite sweet, right? So, for anything bullish, we need a break to the upside. Instead, what we can see is here, looking from the upper left area up to the current uh, closing price here, the price range is falling, so we should apply uh, trades uh, to the downside. But as I said, any break towards higher levels, and I would kind of really say above the 102.60 area, the upside potential might be on the cards all the way maybe towards the, uh, um, oops, that's wrong here. I want to grab this one. How to grab this? Not working out. Anyways, the, the little the little hook you, you'll get here uh, gives me a bit of a targetable area below or slightly at around the 104 range. 104 region is where I would see a next resistance to play out potentially. So that's where I would see the market potentially heading to. And that's a bit of a preview for maybe tomorrow's uh, Federal Reserve interest rate decision. I'm not having the news kind of it doesn't matter. Tomorrow um, at 8 p.m. it's time again to trade that news event here live, uh, of course, with us. Upside potential, yes. Dollar weakness might be on the cards. However, that's the zone which I like to focus on here tomorrow. And I would focus on, on how this zone is going to play out or even not. So downside potential is what I would expect uh, to last somehow further. Guys, happy trading. That's all what I have on here right now. I hope uh, you follow my trading observations here. My dollar cat trade really works nicely to the downside. Stop loss adjusted. I'm pushing this information through to the VIP Telegram channel. Talk to you later. Any further updates on Telegram, obviously. See you then. Bye-bye.